Uh, lost in the finals of the Louisville Open. And we are underway to start off. Ketter on a mountain. Smoldering Marsh for Todd. Pass back. And can't be the first on the board. It is a copy of Hedron Crawler. It's mentioned about things lining up. Looks like Todd does have a fiery impulse for the little guy. And we'll follow it up with another tap land, Sunken Hollow. Yep, that's exactly the window that you want to have impulse. Especially with your coming to play tap lands lining up like this. Hanger back walker for Kent. If you're wondering what the land is, it's a Tomb of the Spirit Dragon. That one lets him gain life off the number of colorless creatures he has. Kaisa is underrated as well in the format. Funny thing about it is this card has probably seen more constructed play than limited play, which is yes. weird for these not very yeah. good cards. Swing here of Hangerback Walker. Todd will fetch. It'll be Pia and Kieran Nalar from Kent. And this is where Todd's choices today are so good. A main deck, game one, disdainful stroke for the Nalars. There was a lot of pressure on him to have that spell in that window, and having that was huge. Now you see he gets on top with a pair of Crackling Dooms and a Radiant Flames. Uh, Kent doesn't have pressure right now. You see Todd ding has a dig through time in hand. Draws Jace, the second one. So no fourth land for Todd. That is far less than ideal. You know, uh, when, when Ketter starts just slamming a... He can get up to two spell territory. If we're just chaining Reality Smashers, there's a lot more pressure on Todd. And look at how quickly Todd makes this play. He's going to... I want to point out some really great plays on both sides. Todd didn't play the Jace because he wanted to leave up Crackling Doom. For Kent, he put the Hangerback Walker to two and then cast Pia and Kieran Nalar just to play around Crackling Doom, which is a really great play by Kent Ketter. Yes. Leave him with four Thopters in play, which is excellent. Almost a six mana to double activate Pia and Kieran if there's Ex any reason for that. <laughs> Except if Kent had known the cards in Todd's hand, he would not have sacrificed the Hangerback Walker because Todd has his one main deck copy of Radiant Flames. That, uh, that <laughs> yep. Once again, Todd was forced to have that specific card, and there it was. Here's Reality Smasher. Todd's down to 13. He did draw land last turn, as we go back to him. Does have the clean answer to Smasher as well. It looks like the answers, as you said, they are lining up right for Todd. He has a Crackling Doom for the Smasher. Though the stumbling on lands is still somewhat punishing for Todd. Won't be able to cast the Crackling Doom and anything else in the same turn. I don't think he can take another five, though. No. You're thinking about casting Jace and the Soulfire Grandmaster, but if something like a second Reality Smasher comes down, you're very much just dead. He'll pass. Yeah, it looks like that's a commitment to Crackling Doom. Kent is going to play Chandra Flamecaller. How big of a draw is that? Yeah, that's even better than a second Reality Smasher, actually. That is huge. Is there a Disdainful Stroke? Kent asks. Uh, no, not, not yet. Not yet. Here's Chandra. She pluses. Kent is going to... Todd will Crackling Doom the Smasher, redirecting to Chandra, but Todd down to seven. Kent just motioning. Here are the, my elementals. They are attacking. Yep, they won't be sticking around for too long anyway. Well, Todd has to go for some dig through time. He needs to dig for an answer. A three damage spell for Chandra. What can Todd do here? Once it's in play, Chandra is one heck of a card against him. It sure is. There's really nothing in standard right now that can just do three damage upstairs. Well, I think what he'd have to do is something like dig through time into land Chandra. Then he can play Soul Fire block an elemental, stay alive, and then play Chandra, kill Kent's Chandra, and hope Kent does nothing of consequence in the meantime. Kent doesn't only have one card in hand. This might work. It's not as far-fetched as it sounds. Right. I mean, there's a lot of ways it could go wrong. Looks like he's going to play Jace, and maybe he's going to go to one. I mean, one's fine, right? It's not zero. We've seen Todd win, win games at one already this tournament. Right. It looks like Spatial Contortion in Ketter's hand. He's going to contort the Jace. Make two elementals. Todd goes to one. Here's Dig Through Time. Todd needs to just find Land Chandra. And what is Kent? Kent has a play, it looks like, with... 
that on the stack. Uh, it's also possible that Kent is gaining zero life with Tomb of the Spirit Dragon. Okay. Roast, Disdainful Stroke, Ojatai's Command. Ojatai's Command could get Ken, could get Todd another turn. He needs land six for when he draws Chandra. Ojatai's Command gains him life. I guess it's not a bad consolation prize. He only has one Chandra in the main. I mean, this is, he, he's digging for something that he is unlikely to find. Right. Gaining life buys him that turn, kind of. You, know, you have to gain life in addition to dealing with one of the tokens. And then you're still looking for the exact same thing to turn after. You haven't made really any progress. Keep in mind that land six for Todd cannot be a fetch land. Right, it would just kill him. Yeah, okay. It, it's a land that comes to play tapped. So if you, Todd could Ojatai's command to gain four, bring back Jace, chump block the elemental, hope. Hang on it, two. Yeah, just play two blockers. All right. He's dead to a number of things, but Kent has to have one of them. Well, Council of... Uh, all right. He, not dead yet, but it's getting worse, well, getting worse. There was a Roast. Founder of the Councils. Oh, Roast will take care of Blocker. And game one goes over to Kent Ketter and Mono Red Eldrazi. You know, we were thinking these removal spells were lining up right for Todd. They were, but so much haste and so much damage from Kent just is, is a lot more pressure than expected. Right. Also, we saw Todd stumble on lands, and the requirement of having a very specific card in a very specific window kept being left for Todd, and he just stopped meeting it. Yeah, well, he so he had the Disdainful Stroke on the first P and Kiron. He even had the Doom into Radiant Flames for the second one and the Hanger Back. He had the Crackling Doom for the Smasher, and then failed to answer Chandra and died. Right. It's going to be a tough game for Todd. We'll see if he's up to it. He's down a game, so he needs the next two as we look at the sideboard. Todd, we see the cards here. We've seen them board before. How do you think he goes here? Yeah, with the uh, number of PN, Kieran, Alars, and Ketter's deck, there's a good chance that we want to keep access to Radiant Flames. Not clear we necessarily want four, but maybe we just have to go down that route. Um, I like uh, Kalidus and any of those creature matchups. It does have the lifelink and the ability to really turn the game around in that way. Uh, extra copy of Rose seems quite good against things like Thought Knot Seer. Uh, Kolagon's Command is interesting. It can peg some of the smaller creatures and take away an artifact, something like kill P and Kieran and a Thopter token. It doesn't entirely deal with the card, but it still reasonably matches up against it. Yeah, I, I could definitely see that. Was Now, we, you know that Kent is a four Chandra deck, and to me that's like that seems to be the thing that Todd has to worry about the most right now, based, especially after how he lost game one. Right, and, and in this matchup, he, he definitely wants to win quickly, and he's going to be casting a lot of efficient spells, but given all those Chandras, the mentors don't seem that great in this matchup. No, I mean, if I kind of agree. I don't know if he wants that one. Looking at Kent's side, he's got some good anti-control cards. We see Outpost Sieges, Thought Not Seers, uh, lots of removal for, for creatures, maybe Ash Cloud Phoenixes. Where do we like? Yeah, and Eld Eldrazi Obligator is even reasonable just as a three-power haste creature here. Just haste is so huge um, against uh, just any kind of controlling deck. Being able to cast two spells in a turn, again, with that three-mana haste threat, pretty reasonable. But yeah, it's mostly just that and Outpost Siege. All right, players getting ready here for game number two. So we're nearing the end of season one here. We see both these players on the leaderboard. So for season two, we're happy to announce that we have our playmats picked out for all of our open series events, and this is going to be pretty good. So if you make your way out to a playmat to, to a season two open or classic, you get an exclusive playmat based on the format of the event you enter. So we have staples from Innistrad for each of the formats. So in standard, this is the Sigarda Heron's Grace. It's one of the new angels out of the set shadows over Innistrad. For modern, we see we have Ghost Quarter. This was around last time we visited Innistrad, that iconic art of card that's definitely a staple in modern. And for legacy, we go all the way back to Thalia Garden of Thraben, this death, the 2-1 that's become a mainstay in Death and Taxes. So each of those, well, this will begin starting at the Columbus Open on on April 16th. So the Open, that is the weekend of the Season 1 Envy. That's our first event of Season 2. And it will happen all the way through mid-August at our Syracuse Open. So you're gonna make, you want to make your way out to any Open event and get the Open playmat here in Season 2. Yeah, all of the arts on these cards is quite excellent. Really like all these playmats. I don't like Ghost Quarter. You don't? <laughs> no, it messes with, with the things I like to do in the format. Lands? They already banned your deck. I mean, I've played a lot of Scape Shift before that. They're going to ban that deck eventually, too. That's not easy. 
I think that deck will fall out of con that deck will become unviable before it gets banned. Uh, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. There's a limit to how fast you can be when your combo deck requires you have seven lands in play. <laughs> Absolutely true. I mean, I guess if they printed Mana Bond, then I guess my <laughs> Scapeshift deck would be pretty good. Turn one, well, turn, turn one Mana Bond, put some Valakuts into play. All right, you go. I'm not sure what's happening when we're banning Summer Bloom and printing Mana Bond. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think I don't think the Valakut has anything to... I mean, it started out on the modern band list. Yes. I think it was fine. Game two underway this time, Todd's on the play. He'll start with a Mystic Monastery. For Kent, it's Ruins of Oren Reef. And he'll have the first play of the game in Hangerback Walker. Let's see if Todd shoots it. Yeah, Hangerback Walker, you know, one Thopter, not huge. So it, it does leave a body behind after one removal spell. So this is the kind of matchup where the card really shines. Yeah, so Todd has to do that. Because, no, he's not happy to do it. I mean, try to give one and a 1-1 one, one for his 1-1. One, one, but... More, at least this one one can't grow. Right. He'll clean it up later, but it, it's going to be good for some damage. Yeah, been in a format with fetch lands, those one point swings, they start to add up. Todd's hand got a lot of removal, no card advantage just yet. I believe disdainful stroke, Ojatai's command, and roast. So, for Kent, it'll be an attack with the Thopter. Todd down to 17. And a follow-up hanger back walker. Going to sneak that one under the Ojatai's command. And pump it with the ruins. Ooh. So you get your 2-2 two -two Ojatai's, your 2-2 two -two walker on the cheap. Yeah, so th that's actually quite a good turn for Kent. Yeah, had Kent played, paid four mana for it, it could have gotten disdainful stroked. Yeah, you get, yeah, this the, is great. you get the same card. Two plus one plus one counters, but you only have to pay two mana. Snuck around the answer that Todd had. <laughs> we'll go back over to Todd. How does he want to deal with these hanger backs? He does not have a great answer at the ready. His draw is a copy of Dig Through Time, though. He has been filling his graveyard, so that'll help him later on. Right. What he wants to set up is an answer to the hanger back walker and then a, a Radiant Flames to clean up all the tokens at the end of it. Fourth card for Kent. Three mana. Looks like it will be three. Looking at Thopter Engineer, that's not bad here. I like how he's sneaking under all of these counter spells of Todd's. Well, he can't sneak under Ojatai's command, but it's unclear if Todd even wants to cast yeah, it against something is, is like this. Is that the card you want to Ojatai's command? I mean, if you're Todd, I think you have to. But that's kind of a win for Kent. Yeah. You got a, a low impact card countered. And, you know, Todd has a roast if he can ever find this Radiant Flame, so he can kill the Hanger Backwalker, but uh, still a step away from sweeping up right. the tokens. Now the question for Kent is whether he wants to swing the walker or pump it. He'll pump and then attack for one. I like the pump there a lot. Is three the magic number for you? That's when it starts becoming a beater? I don't know if I ever stop pumping it, but... That's probably wrong. Once we're at 10, <laughs> I, I think, you know, th there's a number at which you really should stop pumping the hanger back walker. Well, you know, they, they make dice with 20 sides for a reason. You need, you need, that's true. This is I, not that for, reason. It's for counting mana. <laughs> you never made more than 20 mana? I've, I've frequently made more than 20 <laughs> mana. <laughs> We're not, play we're not playing Magic until dice have to track our mana. Yeah. Um, so six is a number to get outside of Roast range, but I think it makes a lot of sense to stop pumping the Hangout Back Walker well <laughs> before that point. Here's Ash Cloud Phoenix from Ketter. It will get met by Disdainful Stroke. Yeah, and that was another one out of the sideboard for Ketter. It makes a lot of sense in this matchup if you can get it into play, though when it gets countered, uh, like most cards, it's at, it it's at its worst. <laughs> most cards have cost four or more. Well, when they counter it, they're not very good. Have you thought about how bad that card is when they just counterspell it? <laughs> Kent will swing for four. Todd drops to 12. But on end step, Todd does have Dig Through Time. The only card he really needs to answer here is the Hangerback Walker. Especially if he can pick up a Kalidus and kill Hangerback. That's a great turn for Todd. Yeah, that's huge. I believe he has a Roast in hand and a Kalidus in this top seven. And another mm -hmm. roast. Mana permitting, Todd can have one heck of a turn. Yeah, that would be a dramatic swing. Well, he's debating between taking Kalidus Cut, Kalidus Roast, and Kalidus Land. Look, he goes for Kalidus Cut. That way he's more likely to hit it this turn. He doesn't have the land yet. And drew another roast. 
I like the greed here from Todd. So if he took Kalidus land, he could just Kalidus and roast this turn, and it would not. There's no way it would fail. There's some risk here. So he's going to play Kalidus on an empty board. If Kent just has a Chandra, for example, that would not that would be good. That would not. <laughs> you know, yeah. There's problems here. So with the mana down, Kent's going to take the opportunity to play Outpost Siege. So Outpost Siege is going to generate some card advantage over a number of turns for Kent, but when Todd starts killing things with Kalidus, it does not take very long for him to just end the game. Right. So the Thopter will swing and put Todd down to 11, but, but this is a dangerous spot for Kent. He wasn't able to kill the Kalidus, and now Todd is going to start having fun. Here's a Roast on Hangerback Walker. And Todd's still hanging out with a Disdainful Stroke, so there's going to be at least one turn where he's able to counter a big spell. Hangerback's exiled. Todd gets a zombie. Gets to start gaining life by attacking with Kalidus as well. Right. Kalidus will swing in. Kent down to fifth. Both players to 15, rather. I don't know that we're going to see him go to 40 life this game. That did happen. He spent most of the round at 42. No, that was Soulfire Grandmaster. Right. Kent free land off his siege. He'll roast away the vampire. Well, you can't that just staple stroke that or one. Or he can just sack the zombie. Yes, you can do this. Yeah, that's... that's. I mean, Kent doesn't have a good play around that. It doesn't make Kent's play wrong. It just makes his play sad. <laughs> it makes the circumstances unfortunate. All right, Kalidus has five damage on him. Here comes yeah. the Thopter. It's not like you can cast Roast at instant speed. He could have waited until he found, like, two Roasts or... <laughs> Roast in the Spatial Contortion. There's a life swing of five life points stolen away by the vampire. All vampires have lifelink. And this one is going to be way too good for Outpost Siege. Game two, Todd Anderson. The first printing of Kalidus didn't even have lifelink. No, it had to get lifelink. I don't know the story. Okay, okay, yeah, what's the f why did that happen, right? No, you just said that all vampires have lifelink, and I'm calling no, you I a like liar. No, I like the vampires do have lifelink. I oh. guess not... I mean, I, do all vampires aggressively drink blood? From You know, or is... Yeah, I think so. Uh, well, it depends. Some, if some vampires are uh, unhappy with the lot that they have found in their unlife. I don't know if you're a fan of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I've, I've seen it. I've seen it. So, do they not drink blood? Well, they, they have to drink blood, but okay. uh, there was a period in the show where Angel, portrayed by David Boreanaz, was feeding off of small animals. How'd that go for him? Well, you didn't keep that up forever, I'll tell you that. I'll try to avoid spoilers as all much right, as possible. All right, all right. <laughs> so, Ken Ketter going for a 9 0 finish. The runner up from SCG Louisville from Bloomington, Indiana. Five open top eights, three opens finals. Looking for that first. Win. He's a member of Team Lotus. Uh, veteran over in Iraq, also a University of in and an Indiana University student of his hometown there. Said, enjoys mustard on his frozen pizza. That one's weird. That yeah. one's... Now, get that. question for Kent, what do you enjoy more? Mustard on frozen pizza or playing seven copies of Seed of the Synod? Oh, that you can't... That's a really good deck. Yeah, that deck sounds play. great. Well, I would understand that. You'd think this is the robot island, right? You can just you can play as many islands as you want. You can probably play as many Seed of the Synods as you want. Right. I understand the confusion, Kent. Well, also, well, deck probably I don't understand stopping at seven. It's, it's a, maybe it's all the ones you had. It could be. <laughs> that's that's a great reason. Only he only had money for so many booster packs. Yeah, we're just if you you know, early on card availability is a real thing. Even I, with commons. <laughs> I definitely remember a point in my Magic playing when I was very casual and a card cost $3 and I just didn't want to buy it. So here's the question. If your deck can have as many Seed of the Synods as you want, then, then what does the rest of the deck look like? Thoughtcast? Probably like I mean, eight, that seems, Thoughtcast seems great. Like 10 copies of Thoughtcast. Ten th okay, so you got 10 Thoughtcasts and like... Broodstar. 18 Seed of the Synods. Broodstar. Broodstar is good. I bet we can be way more degenerate. Is this, is this can, pre or post Arkbon Ravager? No, you can just play any mirrored in black, any mirrored in card you want. Okay, just so all like of them, all of them. Skull clamp? Can I? Yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's like fine. A, well, you don't. You have. So, why do you need clamp? You have so many thought casts. Well, I could just play a skull clamp over thought cast. You didn't tell me I could play whatever I wanted before. Uh, that's probably not right, actually. It's, <laughs> it's, if you have unlimited thought casts, it's probably more efficient to draw cards that way. Yeah, you could get a mix too. Maybe. I mean, we just need 
free things, right? So <laughs> so anything else with Affinity that we're just gonna we're just gonna put them all into play. All right, game two underway. Kent no plays in the first two turns. Neither does Todd. That seems good for Todd to start out with. But we'll see how it goes from there. Kent looks like multiple thought not seers in hands. If Todd's removal does not line up correctly for this, this could do a number. Yeah, and um, on the draw, he won't have access to Ojitai's command on time and roast his sorcery speed. So a lot of pressure to have Crackling Doom exactly. Kent leaving up spatial contortion mana if Todd decides to go for a Jace here. He will. Does it contort? No, it survives. We go back to, t to Kent. He can roast it, though. Also has two vile aggregates. Yeah, I imagine that uh, getting a roast cast would be my priority. Though uh, Ken's going to beat down. Here's Vile Aggregate. It's a 1-5. Getting on the board, also very important. This one, the Pro Tour winning Vile Aggregate. Winning in Modern, nonetheless, now making its standard appearance. I love that you can say that about cards that are, you know, like the, the Pro Tour champion judges familiar, stuff like Two -time that. Two-time Pro Tour <laughs> champion <laughs> judges familiar. Show some respect. Yeah, it was a two-time. Oh, boy, it was. Jace will loot away dig through time. Forget about the, the, the Craig Wesco block deck. But it definitely, it definitely won in that one, too. There's some wretched spider from Ice Age that won the Pro Tour. Like giant trapdoor spider. <laughs> Something like that. Here's vi second Vile Agri we get from Kent. He'll turn them both into 2-5s. He'll swing. And let's not. Let's remember to ingest. He exiles the roast from top of Todd's deck. That's a pretty good hit. A little surprised that Todd didn't have a kill spell here. Going to fetch for Prairie Stream. And Todd will have to act quickly here. These Vile Aggregates, they add up quick fast. They're hard to kill because of the five toughness. Right. The first one is just a 1-5. Second one, they're a bunch of 2-5s. And something like P and Kieran Nalar Whoa, suddenly you have yeah. two 4-5s. <laughs> now we're talking about big creatures. Right. Draws Fiery Impulse. That's not going to help him too much. He'll loot with Jace. Finds a land. Yeah, Todd has good cards, but he, he needs Crackling Dooms here, not right. the things he's drawing. Well, he needs Crackling Dooms and also that Plains. That was the only land that he had access to that he just found. And this is a really dangerous spot for Todd. He could get, he could get bowled over by Kent if he's not careful. Does Kent go for Thought Not Seer? That's the question. Looks like yeah, it's going to be close. He's got Ash Cloud. Yeah, we'll make it Thought Not Seer. Let's see if it works on Kent's side. At low probability. I would say, you know, probably not working. And indeed, it doesn't. Ojitai's command counters yeah, it, and draws. With that Ojitai's command represented, once more, I would be tempted to go for the roast there. Sure. And a double ingest and a swing of four. Todd's down to 12. You wouldn't have minded if the creature got disdainful stroked, but Ojitai's command feels like a beating. That's a huge swing. Of course, he doesn't know that Todd is digging for lands and specific spells. <laughs> right. So here's Jace. It will loot. And what a great pair of hits for Todd. He finds a Roast and a Crackling Doom. Won't need Painful Truce. Already has 100 cards in hand. So yeah. like that discard. So here's going to be Roast. It'll take care of one aggregate. And plays a Tri-Land, plus his Jace on the other aggregate, and Todd appears to be safe yet again. And the way that those aggregates get better in multiples, killing one does more has more net impact than just removing one creature. Kent, he's going to look like he's going to try another Thought Not Seer. Todd is at the ready with Disdainful Stroke for that. Kent's other options look to be Ash Cloud Phoenix and Thopter Engineer. Imagine they're all getting countered. Here's Ash Cloud Phoenix. Will Todd use a Disdainful Stroke on it? Only we'll has see. one stroke. He is at 12. Might be saving that for a Reality Smasher. Maybe. He does have multiple Dig Through Times. Yeah, could be going for that this turn as well. And it's going to be Dig Through Time on that step, so he lets Ash Cloud Phoenix resolve. Keeps the Roast around. I like that. Roast, Impulse, Impulse, Crackling Doom, Roast... <laughs> Land Kalidas. It's a lot of roasts. And so, uh, this deck kills creatures. I don't know if you heard. So that's what it does? Yeah. It plays a lot of removal. Is that the Jeskai way? Uh, oh, man. That's a, a pre-release pack, isn't it? It's like an intro pack. 
Yeah, that's like... I believe that's the name of the intro pack you can buy from cons. Right. Perhaps that deck does... I don't think the deck has roast in it. Uh, Fate Your Forge wasn't printed yet, so so roasting is not the Jeskai way. <laughs> Killing everybody is not the Jeskai way? Is the Jeskai way a form of martial arts for self-defense or acts of aggression? Because it looks a lot like Todd is being aggressive. Yeah, well, the flying crane technique... Though, can, though it can be used in defense, it's primarily a very aggressive maneuver. Do you know the flying crane technique? No, I'm not. I, do I? I don't, not, don't look like a Jess guy. <laughs> you know, that was a perfect opportunity to lie. I don't. Yeah, then some real Jess guy would call me out on it. Nobody though. would mess with you if you told them you knew the flying crane technique. <laughs> The double strike is possible. The flying part could ne can't get a hold of that one. You only have to have it for a turn. It's really just jumping. It's just jumping. You have to become a leaping master to do something like that. Back to Todd draws a second Crackling Doom for the turn. He'll start by using that. That'll take care of Ash Cloud Phoenix. So it will die, flip. There we go. Fiery Impulse will shoot it down. Jace plussing again on the vile aggregate. Todd has kept himself safe for the time being. Yep, Ketter's entire board is contained, and Todd is still able to leave up Disdainful Stroke. Also has access to another dig through time. So can Sand Thopter Engineer a hangerback walker? He'll go for Thopter Engineer. That'll make a 1-1. One -one. That'll pump up file aggregate to a 0-5. Here's, <laughs> here's hangerback. Now we have a 1-5 vile aggregate. After all our tireless work, and they all have haste. So, one, two, three, a swing for three from Kent. Now we're getting somewhere. Todd down to nine. Can Kent somehow find the rest of this damage? Ooh, Radiant Kent. Yeah, disappointed that, that Radiant Flames got ingested. <laughs> Those have been some pretty good hits. We saw it hit a, a roast earlier in the match. There was a real big concern if there's Radiant Flames that Todd could smash uh, Kalidus into Radiant Flames and just immediately end the game. That would be a dramatic swing. Well, not that dramatic. Kind of would just scoop and then... That's and conceding? That's, okay, that's, that's pretty dramatic. dramatic. It would just be a short-lived drama. <laughs> Kent would throw his hands in the air in dramatic fashion. Kent would do that. Exactly. So you agree. I, su I suppose... <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Todd, Ojatai's command, Crackling Doom, Crackling Doom, Kalidus, Disdainful Stroke. Oh, check that. One Crackling Doom, not two. It's kind it's of amazing the impact that Thopter Engineer has had on this game. It, that, that just made a zero power turn into a three power swing, and Todd is uh, under some serious duress with his life total. Crackling Doom will be the first play from Todd. That one has to hit Vile Aggregate. All right, everything else has one power. It's also his fifth card in the graveyard. He has enough mana to dig through time here, but it would take all the cards out of his graveyard if he went for that play right now. He's got some pretty good ones there. Right. Um, you know, still, pretty much what he has for interaction is that disdainful stroke. Uh, tap too low for Ojitai's command at this point in time, so just leaving up the dig or the disdainful stroke if he needs to use it is probably the line he's going to go with here. Yeah, keep in mind that Kent has two copy of Foundry of the Councils, which, especially with Thopter Engineer here, present a, a re very real threat. Yeah, and what Todd was thinking about there was flashing back Fiery Impulse, which still enables him to leave up Disdainful Stroke, one with the line that gives him access to dig through time should he not need to cast the stroke. Ruins of Oren Reef for Kent. It's a land, but it's tapped. He would have loved an untapped land there. Right. A land to activate Foundry of the Consoles would have been much better. His hand is Roast, Thought Not Seer. The question is whether or not he'll jam Thought Not Seer into this open mana. Right. His options are cast it or don't cast it. I think that you just have to jam. What's what Kent's going to do? It will meet with the Disdainful Stroke. That's out of Todd's hand. Kind of a win in that Todd does not get to dig through time right now. But at the same time, the same your spell time, was yeah, just countered. Your spell was countered. Jace was plus. He's at eight now. K 
Kent can push two damage, or he can do one damage and activate Hanger back. With Todd at nine, I do like getting the Hanger back a little bit larger. I, I'm saying that in a nine is a somewhat high life total in the sense that pressuring yeah. it with one Thopter is going to take a long time. Todd down to seven, but Kent is just on roast. That's not, I don't, one big swing of life gain should seal it for Todd. And he's got Ojitai's command and Kalidas. I, I, it just seems like he'll be able to do it. Yeah, if Todd, I think any line that Todd pursues that isn't casting Kalidas into that roast uh, is, is, is likely to be a winning line. Draw for Kent. Oh my, Chandra Flamecaller. Does Todd have an answer? This is a huge draw for Kent. We saw him steal game one with this card, too. Yeah, have to imagine there's going to be a dig through time in response. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> this is this is the whole game right here. Can't just let that one slide because uh, it's pretty much just lethal on its own. With that fetch land happening, it is just lethal now. You got to give Kent's deck credit. Four Chandra Flame Callers is a real big deal against Jeskai Black. Chandra is a very powerful card. All right, so Todd, he's going to delve as far as he can go. Full six cards out of the graveyard. Yeah, and he's still leaving up mana for Ojitai's command. So with these two 3-1 tokens, Kent can only represent nine damage. So he could survive at one. Though the task of dealing with the Chandra from that point is probably too much. Are you wishing in Todd's spot that he played Kalidas last turn then? And Todd does not find a counter spell. Oh no. I mean, it, it, it didn't seem very good a turn ago in the face of Roast, but the choice between Roast and Chandra, that's actually huge. He's going to take a Radiant Flames and a Murderous Cutter. Maybe Cole, it looks like Colagon's command. That'll keep him alive for, for nothing, for not at all. No, for one turn. He'll go to one in the face of Foundry of the Councils. Oh, my goodness. That's, that is not where I want to be. You know, suddenly, uh, it's not clear that Todd has a winning line. He does have the ability to use Ojitai's command to stay alive or to cast a removal spell or two again to stay alive, but actually answering the Chandra. For the second game in a row, Chandra may be Todd's undoing. Chandra pluses, makes two elementals. Here comes the team. This is a swing for eight. Todd will Ojitai's command to, I believe, gain four and draw. Fine, Smoldering Marsh, no help. Hang, out, hang on at one life. A two now. Oh, right, right, right. The Thopter was uh, shrunk by Jace, so. Yeah, I mean. Difference between two and one. I know, right? It's a uh, crackling doom to draw for Todd. I mean, he'd have to find Soulfire Grandmaster here. That might be able to get him out of this situation, but it would still be tough. Here's Kalidus. He can gain some life on an attack. Now, there's a worry that Kent just has the play of crack foundry of the councils and swing flyers and kill Todd. Well, he has access to that on the board, and he's also just been hanging on to a roast, which will kill this Kalidus and make the Chandra lethal on its own. So here's Radiant Flames. It'll exile everything, and Todd will get some zombies. Okay, so the zombies will be able to block the three ones. Hang on for another turn. Okay, we're, he's still alive. Yep, the May even be able to do more. Roast is in Kent's hand. He mentioned that. The Thopters would no longer have haste, right, so that's so something. Right, so he can survive. Well, here's Roast on Kalidus. I, I actually think if Kent has two Roasts here, yeah, Roast on a zombie. Yep, make two tokens. Make One two, of them is going to connect. And that's going to do it. Kent Ketter and Mono Red Eldrazi, he is your undefeated player, 9-0 on day one. Taking a game that looked to be, looked to be in Todd's camp, and riding Chandra to victory. Yeah, Todd playing this very metagamed build of Deskai Black that's good against the expected field, but the Monorail Drazi deck might just be a chink in the armor.
I mean, certainly Chandra Flamecaller appears to be, and Kent is playing four. That's more than any deck we've really seen in the format yet. Yeah, and you have to wonder if this was a deck that Todd was expecting, maybe there'd be something like Virulent Plague in the sideboard, something like that, that could clean up both Thopter tokens and the three one elementals. But uh, the way it lines up, there's a lot of haste creatures. There's a lot of value kind of hidden in the Red Eldrazi deck that uh, on its face you wouldn't think is really there. But the lands or spells in a lot of situations. Chandra's massive. Really impressive stuff.